So I've been working on this particular playlist on my channel called the AI and LLM projects playlist where I've shown you how to build LLM powered projects. So these are all real world projects where you learn how to use LLMs. Now uh, I've built 12 videos already in this playlist and I want to extend this playlist more. I want to build more projects and I've realized that if I don't show you the concepts then it's going to be very difficult for me to continue this series and build more complicated projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate series just for LLM concepts and starting with today, today's topic is all about transformers which is like at the base, at the heart of how LLMs work. So I'm going to give you a very quick introduction about transformers and we're going to, uh, in, the, in the next upcoming videos we'll talk about very, very complex uh, concepts also but it all starts with the transformer. And I'm, I'm going to explain the transformer to you in, in, the, in the most uh, basic possible way. So there, there won't be any maths, there won't be any statistics, there won't be any uh, vectors or embeddings or matrices which really turn people off. People just run away, especially somebody who's starting with LLMs, right? They just run away as soon as they see the uh, the, the, matrix, uh, the matrix math, right? And, and word embeddings. As soon as they see that, they just run away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of that, uh, abstract away all of that, and just give you the concept so that just helps you understand things better, okay? And and we will introduce math later on in, in, in this in this particular series, which is going to talk about LM uh, concepts. So don't worry about that as well. All right. So first, the thing is you've you've heard about GPT, right? Which is GPT three, three point five, four. Uh, you've been using it, right? Uh, so that's something called as a generative pre-trained transformer. That's what the the full form is, and that's where transformer is uh, important because that's what's powering all of the current LM or AI boom that's happening right now. So transformer is something that transforms. That's why the name is transformer. It transforms from something from one sequence to another. You have something called as an encoder, which takes in the input, and then you have the decoder where, or from, from where you get the output. So this is what the transformer inside, at a very basic level, very abstracted level, like at a 10,000 feet perspective, this is all that's happening inside, okay? so the, So, it, it transforms from one sequence to another, okay? Takes an input, gets you an output, uses encoder and decoder. So it does something called as sequence to sequence learning. So let's let's see what that means. So here you have your, uh, sorry, you have your transformer, takes in a sequence, or, or it takes in an input sequence of tokens. Tokens is nothing but words. So you all, that, that's all you have to remember. So when you send it an input sequence of tokens, like for example, my name is Akhil, uh, it's going to remove all the spaces and going to take just the words. My uh, is a separate token, name is a separate token. So that's called as tokenization. So you're just sending it tokens. That's how it, it understands all of this. And you get the sequence into a transformer and then you get the output. Now, all that this transformer is doing is predicting the next words in the sequence and that's how it's coming up with the output. So the next, the very next word in the output sequence is all that it has to predict. So how does that happen? That happens with the help of the encoder and if you open up the encoder, it just has a multiple layers. So it's, this is done by iterating the uh, input through the encoder layers and a particular encoder layer generates encodings, okay, which define which part of the input sequence are relevant to each other and it passes these encodings to the next encoding layer. So it, it, it determines which of these encodings are relevant to each other and then it passes these encodings to the next layer. Now this part, right, which is defining which part of the sequence are relevant, this uh, is a lot of uh, mathematics that happens here, which I'm going to show you in the next videos. Not, not this video, uh, I, I won't be troubling you with any maths in this video, but that's what's happening here, right? The relevance check, uh, it's something that happens and, and it's actually very simple if you look inside. And then finally, you have something called a decoder, which takes all of the encodings and generates the output. That's what you get. Okay. So this is how the transformer essentially at a 10,000 feet perspective, uh, abstracting away all the details, this is what's exactly happening. And, and in most of the situations, if you're just becoming an AI developer and going to be using like just the chat, chat GPT uh, API, uh, you know, or, or just using, let's say an open source LLM and putting it on the cloud, that's probably all that you need to know. Okay. And now, uh, let's go a little bit into the depth, which is uh, transformer. Uh, you get the transformer with the help of semi-supervised learning. So what, the, what does that mean? Semi-supervised learning is something that you'll hear a lot, uh, which basically means that um, the, the transformer is pre-trained in an unsupervised manner with a large data set. Okay, so you start with a large data set, okay? And then you do something called as unsupervised learning in the sense there's no human being that's sitting and, and training the AI model. So it's pre-trained with that. And then after it's done with that, then you fine tune 
with the help of supervised learning. So that's why it's semi-supervised learning. And that's how you get, that's what really works on a transformer. So um, now the, the, the benefits of a transformer and why it's so cutting edge and why it's, it's doing all the things that it's doing, it's because it doesn't process data in a particular order, okay? And we look at an example and I'll explain to you what that means. And it uses something called as an attention mechanism. Now this is a huge topic on its own. It requires reading a lot of research papers. And what I've done is I've read all those research papers and I'm gonna break it down for you in, in the upcoming videos of how attention works, what's an attention mechanism. Uh, but in this abstracted video, all you need to understand is that the transformer, it, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily have to process data in order. And that's the big, that's the big paradigm shift. Otherwise, earlier models had to process data in an, in an order and that's how you had less accuracy. And now this doesn't have that constraint. So you, don't, you have a lot more accuracy and it kind of behaves like humans. At least that's how you think and that's how it's able to uh, pass the Turing test. And it has something called as attention mechanism. All you need to know about this right now is that we can tell it what to focus on and then that's how manipulate the output that we get out, out from it. That's all you need to understand about the attention mechanism right now, okay? So, uh, now you, you had perfectly fine working recurrent neural networks just, just before transformers came out. Yeah, you had, you had quite accurate RNs working. Uh, but, uh, they, but transformers are like a huge paradigm shift uh, because let's, let's take the example of this sentence, right? Let's say I want to transform this sentence from English into Japanese. So it starts like this, like why are you late? Now what RNN would have done is that it would have taken it step by step, like word by word by word. But in many languages, the order of the words, uh, they do get changed, right? So, so you wouldn't, when you, when you get an output from this, of this, from RNN, it might not be uh, very you know, accurate. But now, because uh, transformers don't have to process data in an order, so it can give you a better output, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the basic. So RNNs work in an order, so they might not be able to get an accurate result. Transformers, because they focus on something called as the context and not the order. They focus on the context, which is the meaning and not the order. Uh, they, they will always be more accurate. This is the attention mechanism in short. Okay, that's all you need to know. Okay, so, uh, right, so so I think you, you kind of know now what uh, it's happening inside a transformer. And transformer is what powering the GPT and uh, LLMs that, that are uh, so popular right now. And so, so this is the transformer that we looked at, which had the input, the encoder, decoder, and the output. Now, what's very important to remember is the transformers run multiple sequences in parallel to speed up training times. So it's not just that one, uh, one sequence is happening. It's like there's a lot of parallel sequences that are taking place that are happening in parallel to speed up training time. And that's how you get transformers that are trained with so many, um, you know, like petabytes of data. And so what are the use cases of transformers? Use cases are translation, you have document summaries. So so this, this is why uh, LLMs or GPTs are really good at all of this. They, they can do translation really well. They can create summaries of documents. They can create their own documents, like blogs, if you want to create. And they can process images almost as good as CNNs or con convoluted uh, neural networks. Now we'll talk about these also in, the, in one of the future videos. Okay, so these are the use cases of transformers and that's how, <clears throat> because transformers power GPTs, so that's how they work really well. Now, the thing is, the, the word training is also quite misunderstood. The thing is, uh, you don't program instructions. So many people think that you have to just sit and program instructions into a AI model and that's how that's what's called as training. But that's not how it works. Uh, but it does need a lot of training data and, and, and it, that goes into the transformer and how it works is that, uh, let's define what training is. So it's like, just like a baby, uh, who's born isn't given any instructions on their mother tongue, but they're still able to speak in just a few months. Uh, they're not given any instructions, uh, and they don't, um, and they don't have a user manual on a particular language, like for example their mother tongue. Uh, but they just the, the baby is just learned by observing their elders, and that's exactly what training is. It's essentially pattern recognition. So it's just seeing all of this data and it's recognizing a pattern. And what transformers are really good at is recognizing patterns and storing them in vector embeddings. And that's what uh, this whole game is all about. So vector embeddings is a huge topic. I'm going to be covering that in one of the uh, in one of the next videos. So it's all, it's just really good at pattern recognition. Now, then there's another very important word that will come up uh, that we'll have a separate dedicated video about 
just back propagation because it's just a huge topic. So transformers require something called as back propagation because uh, they undergo iterations to ensure the output is correct. And we will, like I said, we'll learn about this in a dedicated video. This is undergo iterations. All, all that, that's all you need to know right now is that when you, when the output is uh, to ensure output is correct. So you just have to keep telling it, oh no, it doesn't look right right now. It doesn't look like right now. It does all of that on its own, obviously. Then finally, it requires a lot of RLHF which is reinforcement learning with human feedback. So humans have to get involved at some point of time where you'll, uh, the human expert will check if everything is working fine and then he'll just, you know, um, reiterate and make sure the, uh, the transformer gets more and more accurate. So transformers power LLMs. LLMs is powering this whole Gen AI uh, wave right now. And the, these are the categories of, you know, uh, LLMs or transformers that exist. So you have text-to-text, models, you have speech to text models, you have text to speech models, you have image to text models, text to image models, right? So these, uh, these are, for example, your DALI and your mid journey, all of those. And then you have your text to audio uh, models. And um, yeah, which is for music generation and then speech to text is uh, like whisper can do speech to text and text to speech. Then you have text to video, which is Sora. So you have all sorts of models. And then <clears throat> The next next wave that's going on right now is the multimodal uh, LLMs, which is uh, which can work with everything: text, docs, images, videos. Uh, so that's that's what is happening. And then, <clears throat> like I said, you know, these are the two important things: matrices and word embeddings, and even back propagation. That we will cover in uh, one of the like in some of the upcoming videos. But then there's so many so many topics that I'll be covering uh, as part of this particular series. I just created this just to help you guys with the projects that we'll be building here, so that you don't get confused. Because some of these, like for example, the next video coming up in this series is about Mixtral, which is a mixed uh, LLMs, right? So right now there's this huge trend going off blending LLMs together. There's this uh, LLM called the Mixtral, which is the combination of eight different LLM models combined together. And you can run it on a very small machine. You don't have to have like a A100. You can run it on just a T4 GPU and it, it still works and it's as good as GPT 3.5. So you can personally run something as big as GPT 3.5 in your own free cloud instance given to you by Google. Uh, Google Collab gives you like a T4 free, right? So you can run it there. And that's what I'll be teaching you about. So I just thought, you know, if I, if I don't explain all of these things, uh, you know, you might not really understand what's happening in that Mixtral uh, video. And, uh, and so on, I'll, I'll just keep continuing the series also. So I'll create a new playlist for this, just LLM concepts, if you just want to go over these very quickly. All right, thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and share this with your friends. It's all for free. So share this with your friends, build these projects, learn how to use LLMs in, in real-world projects. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.